good morning students so today we are going to see the uh, subject supply chain management okay in supply chain management you are having 13 units in your syllabus the first one is introduction to supply chain management second one is supply chain strategy and planning third one is managing the customer relationship fourth one is inventory management fifth one is management of supply relationships okay sixth one is warehousing seventh one is material handling system eighth one is supply chain management software ninth one is outsourcing mix versus bart tenth one is network planning eleventh one is just in time twelfth one is international supply chain management one thirteenth one is international logistics infrastructure okay so we are going to see the first unit that is called as introduction of supply chain management okay in unit 1 you are having a syllabus of uh, early practices physical distribution and logistics development of supply chain management theory and practices future of supply chain management okay now the first one is introduction to supply chain management now what do you mean by supply chain management first of all this question arises okay supply chain management means what you should understand first of all the basic meaning of supply chain management supply chain management is a lifeline of most companies okay a material uh, whether raw raw finish uh, semi finish or finished goods are produced from the suppliers product are manufactured stores and finally these finished goods are ready to deliver to the customers okay having a strong sub supply chain management is a key of success of every business engaged in production and customer services okay over here in your book they have written supply chain management is one of the fastest evaluation area of interest to academics and business management practitioners okay now what they need to say is that material okay material properly managed and procure from the suppliers to the customers is called as supply chain management okay over here what are the things comes in supply chain suppliers okay logistics and then customers okay logistics is also important part over here because logistics include material management plus distribution okay we will discuss that part later on about the logistics but first of all we will discuss the introduction of supply chain management okay logistics is also occur in supply chain management only we will discuss that part afterwards now now see in supply chain management there are few things we have to take into the consideration first one is uh, materials handling okay how we can handle the material that is very much important okay material whether it is raw material or finished goods or semi goods okay semi finished goods or uh, finished goods are procured from uh, suppliers okay we are taking that goods from the suppliers and after uh, getting that goods what we are doing we are converting that raw material into finished goods right that is called as work in progress in between i mean with the help of the laborers or we can say with the help of the machines right what we are doing we are we are changing that raw materials from suppliers uh, suppliers to working progress and then to finished goods i mean we are taking that raw material and we are converting that raw material into finished goods with the help of the machines and laborers okay these are the two things and after that you know while going forward what we are doing after going forward we are distributing that uh, uh, goods to the other parties such as distributors agent wholesalers or some of the companies you know they are directly given to the retailers also if retailers is ready to purchase the goods in bulk because if they purchase in bulk then only the manufacturing unit get certain kind of profit if uh, if they are selling in single uh, product which is not beneficial and which is not affordable also for the manufacturing unit so if the retailers those who are those who wishes to purchase the goods if they purchase in bulk then only they can get enough uh, profit i mean uh, the manufacturing unit get profit and definitely the retailers also get a uh, beneficial of having the goods with the lesser price okay i mean uh, they will get a huge amount of discount but you know there is one challenge for the retailers also if they purchase the goods from the wholesalers uh, or uh, i mean uh, from the manufacturers directly then you know the challenge is that they will face the challenge which they will face is 
it may be possible you know the goods cannot be sold at a given time duration i mean if they are purchase, purchasing the goods in a bulk it uh, they require certain time to get all the goods sold out so this is also a risk factor for the retailer if the goods remain unsold then you know retailer have to bear the losses because again the uh, manufacturing unit people they are not going to purchase the goods from him right so this is the factor uh, where we have to you know uh, give proper uh, attention so uh, the retailer have to think while purchasing the goods directly from the manufacturing unit so lots of uh, you know retailers they are not taking the risk of purchasing the goods directly from the manufacturing unit they are purchasing the goods from the distributor distributors or agents or wholesalers because you know uh, from them they can take uh, goods in bulk but in lesser quantity right so that you know uh, even if they remain unsold for a longer duration of time uh, you know uh, the, uh, so there will be a less risk okay so this is the uh, important factor now now in early in earlier days you know company depends solely on the historical sales forecast for decision making in terms of production and shipment of the shipment to customers with the distinct change in the global economy uh, businesses are seeking different ways to survive step competitive competitions and adapt to the rapid technological advancement and market condition customer de demand for supply of goods in a shortest period of time has poses a challenges of companies and therefore uh, there is innumerable changes and development resulting in various types of supply chain now at this stage you know the supply chain uh, concept has been uh, you know came in very advancement i mean they have uh, really made a huge amount of changes but if if you uh, see the earlier days you know the forecast is depend upon the sales only if uh, if in a particular area the sales has been done this much so the production is been done that much only because they don't have have uh, the capacity to uh, sell the goods in a um, longer distance so they are making the production and they are selling uh, by uh, by uh, forecasting of future records so but it is not like that at this stage at this stage you know the circumstances has been changed right uh, now uh, you know uh, even you can sell your product from here to uh, america also i mean uh, longer duration countries also long distance countries also sorry long distance countries also so this is the this is the factor okay this is the factor through which you know you can make a changes now the supply chain um, uh, the supply chain manufacturing storage of movement of goods is also taken into the consideration because you know sometimes goods remain unsold so uh, so it's a responsibility of the manufacturing unit to see the goods properly whether it is it remains in a proper uh size or not whether whether it is workable in future or not so they have to keep the goods in a such a condition where you know the selling cannot be uh, i mean the selling cannot get affected if they sell sell that goods uh, even after a one month a one year we can say in a one year the uh, the quality of that goods should remain in a good condition right so this is also one of the important factor now let us discuss Uh, the common adva advantages uh, realized by supply chain management practice reduce ambiguity halt delay and losses along with the supply chain reduce duplication of process data practices stocks etc reduction or removal of operation that have no value for consumers enhancement of uh, productivity and efficiency hence reduction in cost small size of cost small size of stock maintain relay time times improved demand triggering mechanism flexibility and quick reaction to customer order better distribution of information and highlights so all these are the factors we can say uh, they are common advantage is that relies with the supply chain management practice if you make a supply chain management practice in your organization you will get a lot of benefit okay you will get benefit of reduction of uh, reduction of fault delay and losses because if you manage your supply chain properly uh, so there will be a reduction in losses as well because losses occurs when when you are not putting uh, your proper efforts 
to to maintain your uh, uh, warehouse properly i mean the goods which remain unsold you also have to keep in mind that the goods should be uh, goods when in future it will be saleable that should be in a good quantity right so that is also one of the important factor then the reduction duplication of process data practices and stocks etc are also one of the important factor reduction or removal of operation that have no value for con uh, consumers so these are these all are the important factors right so what we have to see what we have to see uh, we have to make uh, aware that uh, you know this kind of things should not be uh, uh, should not be happen i mean uh, the losses kind of thing and the fault in the products right this can be avoided by making a proper management of supply chain okay then small size of stocks definitely if you have a small size of stock then you can you know you can put your more efforts uh, to keep that uh, stocks in a uh, updated manner i mean when uh, when that stock is been sold sold out it should be in a good uh, condition and it should be in a working condition right so this is also an important factor then uh, minimum uh, reply times definitely minimum reply times is required okay minimum reply times means what whenever you produce any kind of products you have to sell that product as early as possible right you don't have to kept your product in a go down right if you kept your product in a go down definitely you in future you will face a problem because in future you can see that product remain unsold right your product remain unsold and that that can create a problem for you okay because if re, if the product remain unsold then there will be a chances of uh, the product uh, i mean the product is not workable in future right there will be some kind of defects also right so this kind of things occurs so what is your responsibility your responsibility is to know how the product can how the product can uh, go in future how the product can uh, workable in future okay now there are few things the role of logistics has changed in that it now plays a major part of success in many different operations and organization right now um, uh, we have uh, we have seen the advantages of supply chain management right we have seen little bit of why supply chain management is required okay let us discuss the next concept that is called early practice of dist physical distribution and logistics okay before discussing this i just want to know the mini uh, what is meaning by what do you mean by logistics first of all logistics ka matlab kya hota hai what is the meaning of logistics that you have to know first of all okay now logistics logistics means what what do you mean by logistics see logistics uh, is equal to material management plus distribution okay what do you mean by logistics logistics means a uh, material management plus distribution and an extension to the idea helps to illustrate that the supply chain covers an even bro broader scope of the business area this includes the supply of raw material and components as well as the delivery of product to the final customers thus supply chain is equal to suppliers plus logistics plus customers okay so supply chain is the broader concept as compared to the logistics logistics just include material management and distribution okay only two things are included in logistics that is called as material management and second one is called as distribution and over here in supply chain we include suppliers logistics customers okay logistics and supply chain are concerned with physical and information flow and storage from raw material through the final distribution of, uh, of the finished goods okay in supply chain in logistics we include distribution of goods and material management proper material management should be done if the proper material management is been handled uh, then you know the distribution uh, we have to uh, keep in mind it's a challenge for us of making uh, the goods available uh, in a right quantity to the right person this is the biggest challenge where you know uh, distribution uh, managers should take uh, care of i mean whenever you are you are distributing the uh, product to the seller right whenever you are distributing your product to the seller 
over here you you should keep in mind that the seller should get that product with the right quantity and at the right time okay and at the right price as well but the quantity and uh, the timing is very much important right sometimes you know when you load the uh, goods in a transportation you can see that lot of goods uh, you know they vanish off i mean uh, uh, some may, uh, some some may theft that goods this may be often so the loss can be occurred by fire the loss can be occurred by accident as well the loss can be occurred by theft there will be more reason if you make a proper packaging of goods you know the goods cannot be uh, uh, cannot be stolen out cannot be uh, you know uh, cannot be th face a losses due to theft right but we need to keep in mind that the goods should be uh, properly loaded so that uh, you know the transporter will also not face any kind of problem and he will transport that goods from one place to another very easily okay so over here these factors comes into the consideration now if you load that goods properly then definitely you know the person those who want that goods they can take easily so material management and distribution is one of the important factor and suppliers logistics customers comes into existence of supply chain then then let us discuss the meaning of logistics first of all logistics is a as i have told material management plus distribution okay now over here uh, we can say as logistics is a management of all activities which facilitate movement and the coordination of supply and demand in a creation of time and place utility okay logistics is the art and science of managing and controlling the flow of goods energy and information and other resources okay logistics management is a planning implementation and control of the efficient and effective forward and reverse flow of the storage of goods and services and uh, related information between the point of origin and the point of consumption in order to meet the customer requirement so these all are the other things of logistics logistics is the positioning of resources at the right time at the right place in the right cost and the right quantity okay logistics is the positioning of resources at the right time at the right place at the right cost and the right quantity okay over here over here uh, the term logistics uh, help to increase uh, the proper material management and the distribution activity okay so so whenever uh, there is a demand of product what we need to do what we need to do we need to make a proper manufacturing of goods i mean uh, we should not make that much of manufacture of goods which remain unsold okay we have to make a proper uh, demand forecasting and with the help of that demand forecasting we have to uh, produce uh, a goods which is being uh, which is really being sold in a long uh, shorter duration of time we require the goods to be sold as early as possible after production because if it remain unsold you will face i mean a businessman will face a huge problem because you know after uh, keeping that goods in warehouses you know defect can arise losses can arise due to theft fire or any other reason yeah due to un any other un un uh, uncertain conditions such as uh, natural calamities also right so due to the heavy rainfall the goods get defected right there are lots of reasons okay overflow of water can also be the reason there are lots of uh, reason due to which you know uh, the unsold product uh, faces a problem then you have to sell that product with the very less price right that is also important factor you have to sell your product with very less price and in future also you will face a, a high high amount of problem right so what we need to do we need to see uh, that you know the product should be you know uh, such a manner that it should be sellable as early as possible okay now we are going to discuss the evaluation of manufacturers distribution channel expansion of matter uh, expansion of the market area dependence on direct channel later 19th century direct supply of customers long distance transport dependent on railways short distance were completed by factory owned transport a range of areas served was strongly 
constrained by poor roads, small batch size, slow transport and limited stock holding and near point of sales. Goods were stocked to railway stations nearest to the customers and then transport by roads. Extensive and ex extremely variable transport times mediator carried small stock mediators were little brand aware so these all are the phrases of later 19 then inter interwar period earlier 20 century consolidation of development of equivalent challenge now creation of warehouse and retail levels now see in the uh, in the earlier 20th century you can see that there is a huge amount of uh, you know uh, creation of wholesalers and retailers also local delivery to stocks were organized for more efficient manner use of railways stock haul powered by carrying cost depending on motor vehicle allowed it the increase in increase of depot delivery area stock held near to retailers there are other things also new the, the distribution system saved on packaging cost always so these all are the second phrases in the since 1960 80s you know there is there is a point of delivery point diminish bulk load ship directly from practice okay from practice you know the, the people are taking the goods i mean uh, there is no retailers or wholesalers as such right so they need to go to the factory and they need to purchase the goods from there right and you know due to which they require to have a huge amount of transportation cost as well okay and there is unprofitable and distributed small order directly to the retailer outlet right firms realize that there will there is really a small amount of profit will profits i mean there is a near about none of the profit the profit is, margin is very less at that time okay from the manufacturers firms also realize that maximum sales did not maximize profit okay over here also the sales is also very large but uh, you know while making the sales you know the profit is not maximizing because because the percentage of selling of goods is very low right there right the sale the product which is being saleable is very much less okay the next one is the uh, the chart which they have given okay in this chart you can see uh, the market area, rationalization evaluation of rise in the minimum drop of size uh, is reflected on uh, reflected by reduction of number of orders in uk okay now see you can see this chart in this chart you know they have given uh, they have given the country of uk uh, description about the different uh, different products okay over here they have given the products such as sugar in 1980s uh, 1960s they have given uh, you see in 1978 uh, the sugar is 30.500 but in 1960s, you know, it has been uh, it has been 90,000, but it has been reduced to 30,500. Now, they, uh, I mean, they have reduced the production. Okay, why they have reduced such kind of production? Because they they come to know, you know, the selling capacity is not that much high. I mean, the sales volume. Okay, the sales volume is not that much high. That's why they are not in a position to increase that sales. Okay, so this is one of the important factor we can see. Okay, then the next point that we are going to discuss is the development of supply chain management theory and practices. Okay, now over here you can see they have given the early ages uh, situation of the supply chain management. Okay. Now, in the, in the year of 1980s, what they are saying that stock controlling and warehousing became element of business decision with the jump in interest rates and business buyout. Okay. Action like a centralized distribution serves 
decreases in stock holding and use of computer for information handling was dominant okay see in the year when we came into the 20th century in that period you know uh, uh, the centralized distribution concept, concept uh, came into the existence over here you know uh, less paperwork activities is being done and more computerization machines activities has been occurred okay now lot of people uh, you know they are starting doing the transaction through email right uh, uh, making uh, b2b uh, b2b business very effectively they are uh, transporting their uh, information through communication channels such as uh, uh, internet right uh, even uh, you know before uh, the scanner has also been used uh, yeah there are lots of other uh, resources also but at this stage you know with the help of the mobile it became very easy to send message from one country to another country right whatsapp is the biggest source with the help of which you can send your information from one country to another country within a time within a second okay so they have over here you know the previous the previous uh, uh, whatever happened in the year 1990s and 20s they have given the description okay they have given all the description about the uh, about the thing which has been happened in the year from the 1990s okay futures of supply chain management okay over here they are giving more focus on the globalization international markets and relatively uh, rivalry give guide to change in scope scale and lead time adapting difficulty in planning and implementation market profiles influenced by uncertainty will change the supply chain management plan production capital includes strain labors will be internationally spread even more leading to more leads time and uncertainty international uh, democratization will lead to new market hence increasing complexity and lead times okay now see in the year 1990 1991 you can see you know the concept of globalization occurs and in the globalization you can see lots of companies from different uh, i mean from the different countries they are came they are coming in india for uh, starting their own business why it is so just because you know in india you can find a huge amount of labors availability i mean the people those who are there in india they are unemployed lot of people so with the help of these companies they are getting uh, they are getting the uh, employment right so uh, so with the help of this employment you know uh, market uh, profiles uh, influenced by uncertainty will change to supply change plan and and it also helps to increase the complexity and lead times as well by international uh, decarbonization democratization okay democratization means what uh, now it became more democratic democratic okay while making it more democratic you know any person uh, any other person can come into the com uh, into our country with minimum requirement right i mean uh, first of all the barriers are very large but now you know the barriers has been reduced even uh, you know at this stage they are also giving the concessions they are also giving a lot of concessions in uh, um, in the taxation policies also uh, for making the business for making coming and settling the business in uh, uh, in india right so the foreign direct investment also increased a lot due to which you know the foreign companies foreign companies they are coming in india and uh, they are starting their own business right and they are also providing a huge amount of employment opportunities to indian people right right so how it is been happening first of all can you know how why the foreign people are eager to come into the india see they are not helping indian people i mean definitely they are going going to get a help from the indian people but they are helping themselves also right right take an example i will give you a few example take an example of usa 
right in usa you can find a lot of companies are available but they tend to come they want that their company should be set up in india also right why it is so why they want that the company should be set up in india why they want that their company should be set up in india because they want to know they want they want that you know in india we need to give a minimum amount of package to the uh, workers or we can say the employees right if if a person working in india they will get near about 15 to 20000 of salary fresher person but if the person is working in america they will get they have to give near about uh, 50 to uh, 45 to 50000s of salary over there so the indian people are getting the benefit of it i mean uh, the companies are getting the benefit of it by having a less expensive less expense uh, in the form of giving salary to the employees right so uh, so you know they will also get a benefit so these all are the things where you know we have to keep in mind okay we have to keep in mind all this stuff now now let us discuss about the information technology okay improvement in information distribution and communication well improved competitive weather definitely improvement in information distribution and communication will improve the competitive weather because uh, because you know uh, with the help of this it uh, sector in uh, any country you know the transaction can be transferized very easily and um, with the help of this it you know the solution has become very easy right uh, over here you know the research and development equipments has drastically changed drastically became effective in the upcoming days uh, in uh, even in now also and in future also you know you will you will going to see a huge amount of growth in uh, it sector as well uh, as today also you know the it companies are really doing a lot of effort really giving a lot of efforts and uh, the companies are increasing day by day but in future also you know this kind of things is also being going to be increased high connectivity of it support system will allow to complete order and various sources in real time using effective supply change okay constant pressure to reveal nature's resources by increasing design and technology will uh, will necess necessitated modification in manufacturing and supplier base okay independence of natural resources will keep supply chain more constant and sustainable constant rise in supply chain uh, constant rise in pr pressure on high chain on supply chain of use environmental friendly materials in uh, production distribution usage and disposable will affect production techniques and hence the partners okay manufacturing flex extra flexibility and including new technologies in production system on daily basis will require growing need of better technology and knowledge of buyers will make products more difficult leading to composite process and new need of new materials okay now see manufacturing technology they have also changed their way of techniques nowadays you know uh, with the help of machines they are making more production as compared to the laborers right as compared to the employees so so over here you know utilization of machines has increased a lot and due to which you know the sales has also increased because machinery um, machinery products are not that much defective i mean if you are making any, any kind of packaging by through the help of the machinery definitely it is not be it is in a good it is a effective packaging because machinery doesn't uh, you know make any kind of uh, problems because it is being automatically done but but if the packaging work is done by the employees definitely you know there will be certain kind of defects because you know um, there will be a chances of uh, uh, chances of that you know sometimes the laborers work in a good condition sometimes they don't want to work even though they need they require to work so they will do a casual work 
but it is not being happening with the help of the machines right machines are really helping the employ uh, helping the companies a lot i mean you know, with the uh, with the help of the machines we can we can make a maximum amount of production as compared to the employees right as compared to the labors because labors are uh, labors with the help of the labors we can make a mistake but but by while machines it cannot be done okay but you should have a little bit of uh, the necessities of machinery such as electricity right there are some equipment which is required to be keep kept in machines right so all these stuffs is required so so over here you know uh, manufacturing technology uses more machines work as compared to uh, the employees work even even if you see uh, the production of parle biscuit or the production of uh, you know matches the production of uh, pencils or even paint you can see lot of production has been done with the help of machines only right because they don't use the employees more they use machines more and with the help of the machines you know the changes can be taken very easily okay and machines are really helpful thing for the uh, for making a effective product okay now there are other factors also such as social aspect okay rising world population will uh, damage the availability of resources and force organization towards being more well organized and inventive uh, demanding needs of uh, basic uh, human rights will boost the social liability aspect of business and thus it will be, have to be included in strategy rising insecurity caused by war and terrorism will affect the configuration and configuration of alliances and will have unavoidable efforts on supply chain reliability and performance of cost definitely it, it also affects then customer relations there will be a direct relationship between manufacturers and customers throughout the life of the product okay yes definitely definitely there will be a relation when you know there will be a good amount of trust we can say good trust between the manufacturers and the customers and this trust can be uh, can be left if uh, there is a less amount of you know there will be a less amount of gap between the customers and the manufacturers if there is more gap more gap in the sense of transportation i must say okay see manufacturers they want to they uh, sell the product to the uh, they sell product to the agents distributors right and then wholesalers and then from wholesalers to retailers and then retailers to customers if this gap is reduced definitely you know the customers can get a good effective product because you know it is uh, due to which the reduction in gap you know the timing also reduce the cost also reduce right and you know the people uh, they are also getting uh, the benefit of having a good product in a uh, shorter duration of time right so these all are the advantages these all are the important advantages that uh, that the customers are getting okay if they uh, if they get the product directly from the manufacturers but you know the manufacturer unit they will give the product to the customer then only when you know the customer will purchase the product in bulk because the manufacturer unit they also want that the goods should be sold as early as possible okay if there is huge amount of production definitely you know sometimes the manufacturer are not give, going to give the product directly to the customers but if the level of channel is been reduced then definitely you know customers will get a good product i mean good product with easy availability and uh, you know the cost is also very less and you know the production time duration will also be very less i mean while we were distributing the goods from one place to another you know the time span is also there if there is shorter time span definitely it is being helpful for the customer to uh, consume that product because you know sometimes there is an expiry date availability right if the goods is expire in a one month or in a one year right if the goods is expire in a one year definitely you know the customer what they require they require to see that the goods the time duration is should be very much high i mean it should be near about 8 months 10 months uh, 11 months right so it's a responsibility of the uh, manufacturers 
whatever goods they uh, produce i mean whatever goods they manufacture they should supply that goods as early as possible to the customers in the hand of customers and this can be done by the reduction of channel of distribution okay the channel of distribution can be reduced the channel of distribution can be reduced only only when when there is a good contact of customers directly to the uh, good contact of manufacturing unit directly to the wholesalers or retailers because there will, there should be some one kind of channel only okay if they are having a good uh, relation with the wholesalers and suppliers uh, wholesalers and retailers definitely they can directly sell the goods to them okay there there, sh there should be no need of distributors also there should be no need of agents also right because they are also uh, there to eat up the money in between so we can neglect them and we can sell directly to the wholesalers or retailer and through them they can uh, the customers can get a product uh, with a shorter duration of time and with the less cost as well because over here you know they are saving the cost while sending the goods uh, indirectly to the retailers uh, sorry to the uh, agents and uh, distributors so they are reducing the cost also so the customers can also get a product with the minimum cost as well i mean below mrp if the retailers and the wholesalers are ready to pay but uh, there will be some chances you know the customers will get a discount but they have to purchase the goods in bulk i mean more than the quantity which they require so over here the customers have to make a little bit of compromisation okay so we have discussed the concept of a customer relation uh, there are organization structure human resources as well okay in the upcoming lecture we are going to discuss all this stuff we are also going to discuss the supply chain strategy and planning okay in supply chain strategy we are going to discuss the corporate strategy logistics supply chain uh, planning level of planning major planning area customer service logos facility location strategy uh inventory decision transportation strategy all this stuff okay now at this stage we have completed from our side we will see the concept in the next lecture thank you for your cooperation okay thank you for your cooperation